Hey folks, Mike Seekliner here with Team Wilson Combat, and as you can see, I've got some new steel targets. I'm super excited about these things, and I can't wait to tell you about all of the features that these guys have incorporated, and in my opinion, the best steel target design out there. One of the things that uh, my students ask me all the time is, Mike, should I train on steel or should I train on paper or cardboard? And the answer is, it depends, but the reality is steel targets are literally uh, leaps and bounds better than paper or cardboard targets in a lot of cases, such as bad weather. You know, if it's raining or snowing or whatever else out here, guess what? I can rock and roll my steel targets all day long. Um, time management, because when I set the steel up, literally I'm shooting the steel and I'm shooting the drill in scoring zones, and I'm gonna talk about that here in a second. And then my paste is simply a spray paint can of paint, and I can use brown or white or off-white, whatever I want for the training and spray the target. So it's really, really efficient in terms of time. Uh, but more importantly, from a training aspect, and I want you to understand this is critically important, uh, the visual feedback and the information relay to you when you're practicing on steel is critical. So what I mean by that is, if I'm shooting a cardboard target, right? And I'm calling those shots, boom, boom, boom. And I see the sight picture and I call what I think to be, you know, a lower left non-zero or non-hit in the center. Um, for me to really ascertain whether or not that's truly a non-hit, I've got to walk up to the target and look at it, unless the sunlight is perfect where I can actually see the hit on the target. Not so much with steel, because the steel gives me instantaneous feedback in terms of the information, because the second I call that shot, you know, that front sight is a little bit left in the rear sight notch or higher or whatever else, and I fire that shot, that hit immediately appears on the steel. So I get the audio feedback from the steel ringing, but more importantly, I get the visual feedback of the hit on steel. So instantly, the second I fire that shot, it teaches my brain, hey, that sight picture with this gun at this distance is gonna, is gonna translate to that hit on target. So I'm super excited to have some steel targets to train with. Now, one of the downsides to using a standard steel target without a scoring zone is a lot of uh, shooters are just literally making the steel ring, right? They're shooting it, if they get an audio feedback from the steel, that's a hit, but they're not actually taking the time to aim at the scoring zone they're trying to hit. And this particular target has a scoring zone in the center body as well as the head. So you get that high center chest scoring zone or the IDPA circle if you're an IDPA shooter. You got the upper scoring zone for, the, for those headshots. And probably most importantly that I'm actually very excited about is they added a neck scoring zone. So you can't shoot a, uh, a drill, for example, where it requires body and head hits and lie about your head hits anymore, right? That scoring zone or that scoring line in the neck is gonna actually force you to walk up, you know, put something straight across it and know, hey, I got the head hit, or man, those shots are down in the neck zone, okay? So scoring zones, key component in a well-designed steel target. You've gotta have scoring zones. If you don't, you're just gonna be ringing the steel and hoping you get good hits versus knowing exactly where your, your hits are going. Um, one more thing about this target, and one of the things that I really like about it, is it's at an angle. It's set up so all of that steel fragmentation when you actually hit the target is diverted safely down toward the ground in, a, in, a, in the proper angle. One of the things that I see a lot on steel targets is improper angles and then improper steel target design in terms of the material they're using. Now these are AR500, this is hard stuff. So you're not gonna get any pitting of any kind. And one of the biggest dangers you're gonna find on steel targets on any range is if you get pitting on the target, don't shoot that steel. You're never gonna get that on these targets because they're very, very hard, very, very good steel, high quality steel. And they're at the proper angle. So the steel training, assuming you're following, you know, steel training, uh, uh, safety rules, set the targets up at 10 yards, make sure you have the proper angle, keep your bolts tight, you know, make sure you're backstop and beyond all that stuff, you're gonna be as safe or safer than you would with a cardboard target or a paper target with a higher level of efficiency. And like I said, that real time information transfer, which is to me, the single best thing about shooting on steel target. So I'm super excited. I'm gonna run some drills, gonna work in some body shots, some head shots. I'm gonna set up three or four targets at different distances. Uh, and get ready to rock and roll and ring these steel targets.